Okay, let's get into the service here. Let's get in. Oh, we are in like week six of this series. Seeds, man. It's been going so well. I love this. I love this content. I love uh, how, this, how this study has been going and how God's word has just been showing us over and over again how tomorrow starts today and the things that we do today, like what, that's what matters. And there's so many great illustrations from the word of God about how a seed becomes a tree and how we become new things in life too. And that's kind of what today is going to be all about, um, us becoming new, per- new people, you know, how we are transformed, how we're made new. Even in fact, in, in Psalm 1, uh, righteous people are likened to a tree planted by streams of living water, streams of water that are just like constantly supplying us. Well, today we're talking about weeds weeds and I, I I don't know about y'all but like at my house I feel like I got some weeds that are planted by streams of living water because they're growing up so strong I'm like what is going on with these weeds they're they're incredible they're so strong I don't believe it I'm, I'm trying to rip these things out and they come off on the top pop and then they grow back again even stronger and they're like mocking me as I walk by like what's up they're like flexing on me they're doing a neck flex on me like I didn't know weeds could do that the weeds I got planted by streams of living water, okay? And so I get the lawnmower, Wah! fixed it, right? No, no, you just spread them around. <laughs> or you just scattered some more weed seed. That's all you did? That's all you did? It's absolutely incredible. And now I got three, three weeds, even stronger than the first one that came. And, and our world is like that, you know? It's just like weeds spreading around. We live in a world of weeds, don't we? A world of weeds. Well, weeds are terrible and uh, uh, they're everywhere. They, they come without being invited. And now weeds are only $49 an ounce. <laughs> Thank you so much. You just outed yourself. Oh, okay. Let me explain. For those of you that are not laughing, you're like, what's so funny about that? Just drive to the Bay Area and you will see, just like I did this weekend, 17 billboards advertising how cheap their weeds are. And if you still don't know what I'm talking about, you are so innocent and I love you. I love you so much. All right. When I was a kid, it was a lot more than that. It was a lot more expensive than that. I saw, I, and we're t- it's, it's medicinal now. But when I was a kid, it was illegal. Weed was illegal when I was a kid, okay? And now it's like your doctor just gives it to you. Here you go. It's good. Here you go. I'm sorry. Like, how many jokes you want to tell about this is ridiculous, right? It's, it's side effects may include the munchies. Side effects may include laughing at nothing. I know, I know what you're thinking right now. It's like, you're, y'all, some of you are laughing about nothing right now. That's sleep deprivation. That's not the medication you're on. Side effects may include not remembering what's, what time first service is. I, get, I, I understand. I understand all of that, but it's, it's ridiculous that our world has changed quite a bit, and we live in a world of weeds. You know, the, the world is different now, but Jesus knew. Jesus knew what we'd be facing. He knew there'd be a world filled with weeds, and it was the same back then. Of course, we're talking about weeds that grow in your grass, but uh, the, it's a parable. You know, he, he's, he's using language that's metaphorical so that we can understand that he's not just talking about weeds in the ground. In fact, he was never just talking about weeds in the ground. He's talking about different things in our life. And as we're going to find out, um, it's not only stuff in our life that we need to get pulled out. There's, it's also even much more than that. We live in a world of weeds. So we're going we're gonna to turn in our word to, to Matthew 13. It's where we've been basically this whole series. Um, but it's great. You know, it's where the parables live right here in this, this middle chunk. And this parable about weeds is actually very, very interesting and actually quite surprising. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shed some light on that. Um, as we read it. So let's just read a couple big chunks of scripture. If I'm going to do a lot of reading for the next minute or two, just stand by. Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. Verse 27, the farmer's workers came and said to him, Sir, uh, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did, the seeds, where did the weeds come from? Verse 28, an enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked? No, he replied. This is, this is really, really interesting stuff, really interesting. No, he replied, you'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together. That's an important phrase. If you got your Bible with you, you could like pencil. I don't know if you like, that's 
sacrilege to you or not. I like to write in my Bible with a little mechanical pencil so it's nice and fine and I can erase it later. But that's an important little phrase right there. Let both grow together. That's, that's, that's mind-blowing to me. But I'll talk about it in here in a minute. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles and burn them and put the weeds into the barn. Okay, so first of all, um, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of... Um, History. The listeners of Jesus in this time would have known exactly what he was talking about. Um, there were weeds uh, that could be sown like that in people's fields. Uh, it was called darnel. It was darnel. Uh, it's like a, a rye grass, uh, like a certain kind of weed that's actually in the Roman Empire. You can Google it. You can Google Darnell weed, but, you know, keep safe search on, you know, so you're, you're searching weeds, you know, online so that your spouse is not like take you to a program. No, it's not. It's just look it up and you can see it. You can see it in the Roman empire. Uh, these, these Darnell, um, weeds were illegal. It was illegal to be like, to do something like that because apparently it was common for that to happen. And here's the interesting thing about these weeds, uh, the Darnell ryegrass is that all the way growing up, all the way growing up, all the way until fruit is they look exactly like wheat. They look exactly like it. They look exactly the same. You can Google it. You can see for yourself that it grows up, and it kind of looks like, like foxtails. Not exactly, but kind of like foxtails. I was looking at it, but it looks kind of like the way wheat, you know, at the end, it kind of like goes out. It's the same. So until the fruit comes out, you can't tell the difference between these two things, and it was illegal in the Roman Empire to sow these seeds. And so his listeners would have known this. Jesus' listeners, would, we don't know that because we're, you know, just spray some Roundup on it, man. I don't know what it is. Just... And most of us aren't farmers either. And even if you are, you've got probably grapes is what you farm. It's all right. I get you. I understand. You and I would be tempted to believe that weeds are just uncomfortable situations in our lives. And to some extent, you're right. You're right. It is partially that, um, that we want to pull those things, but... We don't have to turn to a Bible commentary here. Uh, we can just keep on reading in the Bible. It's like only a few verses later, Jesus explains himself. He explains. So let's just read it. Let's just read it. Uh, jumping down to verse 36, same chapter, just a couple verses down. It says this, then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, can you explain to us what you meant by that? Please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. Check. That probably wasn't a huge surprise to most, but in case you were wondering, yes, it's talking about Jesus, the Son of Man. Verse 38, the field is the world and the good seed, here's where it gets interesting, the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. And that's where I read and I, it gives me pause. It, I'm like, people? What are you talking about? People? That's okay. People, the, the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. <laughs> that's rough. All right, Jesus is saying, no, some people are weeds. That's crazy to me. That's cra and we're going to explain all this, all right? Don't go jump into conclusions yet. I'm going to explain this a little bit. It's not as condemning as you might think. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. Check mark. Okay, we could probably guess that one. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. I could preach a whole message on this. This is a good topic to talk about. The end of the world, the end is coming soon. Jesus is coming back for his people. I love it. And, the, and then it goes on. I, I could just preach on that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to read. Um, okay, the harvest is the end of the world and the harvesters are the angels. Uh, verse 40, just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The son of man will send his angels and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Verse 42, and the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace. Whoa, keep reading. Let's go. <laughs> Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 43. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear, let him hear and understand. That's what I want for you. I want us to hear and understand. I want to hear and understand. Because that's surprising to me. Like, let me just like call out the obvious. that th It's surprising to me that this parable, as Jesus describes it, and we just read it, and sometimes we go over things, but, but listen to what he's saying. The wheat and weeds that he's talking about are different people. Like some people are serving God and living in the kingdom and doing well, and other people are weeds. And, and like, like, like I said earlier, don't start drawing conclusions yet. We're gonna talk about this. We live in a world of weeds, and, and in a world of weeds, it can mean two things for us. So let's talk about this. 
Number one, number one, what this means is, number one, we all have weeds. So let's talk about probably the most immediately obvious is this is, it can refer to the issues, the situations, the problems in life. Weeds is, I'm not talking about in your yard. I'm talking about in your life, your problems, your situations, your troubles. The first time weeds show up in the Bible, in fact, is in Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter three. Actually, let's look at that. Let's, let's take a look at that here. It's kind of interesting too. And to the man, God said, since you have listened to your wife, ooh, cut that part out, and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, a.k.a. weeds, though you will eat from its grains. Okay, so God's design was not for us to have to toil and labor through that, but because of Adam and Eve and because of what happened there, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. And, and that's where weeds were introduced in, in the word of God, into the world, into the universe, was because of the fall. There's going to be wheat for us to eat. There's going to be sustenance for us. We're going to be taken care of. But at the same time, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be struggles. This needs to be understood by every single man, woman, and child that's trying to live for God. Because this is the kind of thing that trips people up the most sometimes. Why do I have to go through hard times? Why does everything bad happen to me? Here, I'm serving God. Why do bad things happen? Because, because there's always going to be thorns and thistles in life. You're, there'll be wheat for you to eat too, but there's going to be thorns and thistles, problems. You're going to face, as long as you are living on this earth, whether you're serving God or not, there's going to be people who bother you. <laughs> There's going to be people who are trying to treat you badly. There's going to be situations that, are, that, are, that seem to spring up out of nowhere. There's going to be relationships that get strained. No, nobody say amen because we're all, we're taking this in, okay? There's going to be money issues that are, money gets tight and money's, money's a problem. And as long as we live in this world, there's going to be there's people that are going to pass away that we feel it's before their time. As long as we live in this world, there's going to be sickness that falls on people and we feel it doesn't, it shouldn't fall on them. Or maybe it's on us and we're like, I don't deserve this. What's going on? As long as we live in this world, our kids have the opportunity to go wayward, even though we did everything we know to do. Okay. Uh, because we live in a fallen world. That's why this happens. And, and so it's, it's the fall of man that, that brought this about to us. And so it's, it's important to understand it's not, maybe not necessarily something you did. You inherited something. We talked last week about sometimes we harvest what we didn't plant. Remember this, this is last week? You check it out from, from, from uh, the mess, last week's message. But sometimes we receive things that we didn't earn. Sometimes we harvest things that we didn't plant. But every single one of us has got a sin nature we didn't ask for too. Hello. <laughs> we didn't ask for that. We reaped that, but we didn't sow it. All right. We got a sin nature. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. All right. Appreciate that a lot. But on top of that, every single person who ever hurt you and did you dirty, they also inherited a sin nature that they didn't ask for. All right. So we have this now, this cascading effect all throughout the world. And not to least of which of our problems is there's actually natu natural disasters that are happening because of the fall of man, because of the fall of man. So this is important for us to understand. As long as we live in this world, man, this is like a really discouraging little point that I'm bringing. I know, I understand. I'm usually so uplifting. I'm usually so upbeat. Um, but we can't gloss over this stuff. We have to talk about this. And I want you to understand that it's not always just because, oh, that person did something, so they earned it. Oh, well, I, I must have done something wrong. So I, No, we live in a fallen world. So not everything that happens to you is because of you. And this is just a reality that every single person needs to face in life. Okay, so number two is this, is we all are weeds. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, lo I love this point. It's my favorite point of the whole message right here. Not only do we need to pull our own weeds, but we've got to, we, we are, we are weeds, that's, that's what, well, at least you used to be. At least you were at one point, every single one of us. It's easy to sit back in our chairs and blame others for every bad thing that's ever happened to us. Very easy to do that. But the good news of the gospel is not so good without knowing the bad news. And the bad news is you were born a weed. We're all weeds by birth, not by choice, not even by action, we, by, by nature, by nature. In other words, why would, a, why would a savior, why, why would we need a savior if we didn't need saving, 
right? We're all born this way. Listen to, listen to Romans 12, excuse me, uh, Romans 3, Romans 3. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. This is like textbook, basic Christianity 101 is that we've all sinned. There's, no, there's nobody perfect in this room. Not me, not you. We, no, none of us have the opportunity to sit back and go, yeah, uh, I got this. No, you, you, you may got this because of Christ, but because you've accepted him and, and you better hang on to that. You better stay focused on that. That is super important. You're a weed, I'm a weed, we all weeds. And, and stick with me though, because at the end of this message, uh, there's gonna be an opportunity to change all that. This is a message about transformation after all, after all. Okay, so let's get, let's get to action. Let's get to some action steps here. What do we do about these weeds? What, what do we want to do about weeds? I know, I know what I want to do about weeds. I want to rip them up. I want to burn them. Get me, rent me a flamethrower. Do they rent flamethrowers at Lowe's? That's what I want to do. That's what I, maybe you want to do that too, but I, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to keep my grass too. <laughs> I don't want to, you can, you can tear up your weeds with dynamite if you want. I'm going to keep my lawn. I'm gonna, I want it to look nice. I don't know about y'all. I, I'm imaged up keeping my neighborhood, all right? A lot of judgment flying around. Got to have a nice edged lawn. And so if there's weeds there, I'm not trying to get a shovel out and have a bunch of potholes and do all that, but that's, this, that, that's going to translate, that whole illustration I just gave about uh, getting all aggressive, about uh, getting those weeds out, that is about to translate here, here really soon. But hang in there with me. Number one, what I want us to do, what do we do about all these weeds? Number one, I want you to pull your own weeds. First of all, pull your own <laughs> weeds. Amen. You're like, I, I'm not pulling my neighbor's weeds. I know that much. I'm, that's his job, right? Well, pull your own weeds. We, we need to pull our own weeds. These are your hurts. These are your habits. These are your hang-ups. These are the things that only you can, those are yours, your relationship breakdowns, your, your financial habits, your, your, your private life, your private life, your phone life, your computer life, you know, your, these, only you can deal with those things. Only you can get honest with those things. Only you can invite accountability on those things. And at the, in the end, only you can deal with those things. While God helps those who help themselves is not a scripture, <laughs> there is a lot of truth in that statement, I was told early on, remember, by, by someone who doesn't go to church very often, remember, uh, God helps those who help themselves. And I'm like, is that in there? No, it's not. It's not. But there is, there, there, there is some truth behind that statement because even turning our lives over to God is our choice and our move. So in, in a sense... You, you could say it that way, but it's not a scripture. So don't go around saying that, all right? And then say, oh yeah, I'm from Lifeline Church. God helps those who help themselves. It's in the book of, book of Elliot 101. No, 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 it's not, it's not. But so listen to this. This is a, a passage that kind of alludes to that truth. It's in Philippians 2, starting in verse 12. It goes like this. Dear friends, dear friends, you've always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it's even more important. And it says this, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Let me say it one more time. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. All right, so if you were raised in church you, or, or you, you know, may have heard the Bible a time or two, you've heard it like this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> yeah, and, and most of us say that to somebody who's trying to get in our business. <laughs> somebody who's trying to pull my weeds, I'd be like, hey, work out your own salvation, fear and trembling. <laughs> but that is directed to all of us, is we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to work hard to show the results of our salvation. We, we need to do that. It's up to us. It's up to us. What it means is if, you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you still have to work on pulling up those pesky weeds that keep growing up in your life because this side of heaven, we're going to face those things. And what I, when I say this side of heaven, I mean before we die. <laughs> before we die, we, are, we live in a fallen world. So we always are going to have things that we need to 
keep track of, things that we're going to need to continue to work on, continue to work hard to show the results of my salvation, the freedom of my salvation, the, the generosity of my salvation, all the things that we're supposed to have, it's up to me to work on those things. So God helps those who help themselves. Not a scripture, but there is some truth to that, especially for in, in this context. What this means is when it comes to your family life, it's up to you to invest quality and quantity time with your family. No one's going to make you do it. God's not going to make you do it. All right? You, it's up to you to do that, to, to have your family grow and thrive. And some people, some people say, oh, you, you got to spend quality time. But let me just give you a little, uh, if, you're, if you've never heard this before or if you're new to having kids, uh, you got to spend like half a day with them before you can even get some quality time with them, right? Because I don't know about you, but my kids are like, I got to spend a good chunk of time before they'll even open up. It goes with your family. It goes with your kids. Hey, don't, don't poo-poo quantity time. Poo-poo. <laughs> Sorry, it's early for me. I don't even know what time it is. It's like I'm... <laughs> The time change just caught up with me right there. I laughed at my own poopy joke. <sighs> Quality and quantity time. No one's going to make you do that. That is something that you parents, you're going to have to do. Quantity time. Block out a good chunk of your calendar to spend time with your kids. Think you, you can't budget in your calendar, oh, 20 minutes of quality time. But you just got there, all right? It doesn't work like that. You can try it. But just take my word. It does not work like that. They, they will not see it as quality. They'll see it as you breeze in, you breeze out. All right? So I'm, I'm lingering. I'm, I'm now I'm dabbling up in your business right now. So family, it's up to you. It's up to you to, to do those good things. Uh, and if you want good friends in life, it's up to you. It's up to you to finally listen to your pastor and get into a life group life is up to you. Like we can lead you to water, but we can't make you drink, right? Like we could put the clipboards right there and we could hold them in front of the door and make you like scooch them out of the way. We could do everything. We cannot make you do it though. It's up to you to decide to go to life group, make those right friends. And even pulling weeds might mean removing a couple toxic relationships. Hey, I'm all about being a good influence to people. But there are some relationships that just need to go. You don't need to say amen because I, I already know. I don't need your confirmation. I already know. At work, at work, it's going to be up to you to have a good attitude, even when the boss tells you to do something that you don't want to do. All right? That's just life. That's just life. It's up to you. No one's going to make you do it. It's up to you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, to work hard, to show the results of your salvation, even at work, when the boss is unreasonable, when he asks you to do all 10 things that you don't understand to do, it's up to you to say, you know what? I'm going to have a good attitude. You know what? I'm going to choose, choose joy, right? That's like our favorite one because it's hard. It is hard to do, but it's up to us to do it. No one's going to make it. God's not going to come in and be like, well, you're saved, so I'm just going to go ahead and and, and pull you, your arms up and down and your jaw like a puppet and, and say all the right things for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit is in us. He is with us. But we have the ability to run our own life in, in repentance, in, uh, in finances. In, so like in, it's up to you in your finances to put God at the top of your budget, to have a budget, <laughs> and then to stick to that budget. It's up to you. No one's going to make you do it. And no one's going to make you keep on repenting uh, when, when you should have learned it the last time and, and keep on saying, I'm sorry for the things that you did wrong. No one's going to make you go to the gym. No one's going to make you listen to God-honoring podcasts. No one's going to make you do all these things. No one's going to make you go through the growth track next week after second service and join the dream team and let us personally coach you one-on-one -on -one and develop your leadership. No one's going to make you. We can keep talking about it till we're blue in the face, and we do. <laughs> but no one's going to make you do it. It's up to you to do that. In your marriage, wives, it's up to you to, to honor your husbands as unto the Lord. Long pause. <laughs> and then husbands, it's up to you to love your wife like Christ loved the church, giving up his life for them. No, one will, no one's going to make you do any of that. It's up to you to pull your own weeds. Yeah. You, gotta, you have to decide. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show the result. I'm going to work hard to show the result of my own 
salvation. Okay, number two, I'm gonna take a hard left now. And we're gonna change gears just a little bit. But number two is this, let wheat and weeds grow together. That is like, I'm, I'm totally going off now because I wanted to talk about weeds and situations and problems and things that you deal with in life. I wanted to talk about that, but we cannot ignore the essence of what the parable was talking about, of what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about people. He was talking about wheat and weeds as people, wheat and weeds personified as people. And this sounds exactly, this sounds so weird to me. And I, as I like, I kept reading all week long. I'm like, this is weird. It's weird. But it's exactly what Jesus says to do. Let, it's the heart beat of the parable is let wheat and weeds, people, people living for darkness, people living for light, grow together. What does that even mean? That's so crazy to me. He's talking about how, how Jesus described to us in the parable, wheat and weeds, that some people are living for the kingdom and the king. Some people are living for darkness and they ought to grow together. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I'm wheat for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm wheat. I'm good. I'm, I'm up here in first service, spring forward day. I'm, I'm about as wheat as they come. I'm, I'm good. I'm good to go. And you are. I believe that about you. I, I, I do. I, I think you're great. But here's what I want to address. People these days, hear me out. People these days um, don't want to teach about this. They love to tear each other down. People these days love to tear each other down. But Jesus said not to do it because this, you would inevitably pull pull out people that you thought were weeds, but they're actually wheat. That's what the parable said. You'll pull up some wheat if you do that. If you go around with your puller on, pulling people out, cutting people down, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. You're going to inevitably cut down some people that didn't need to be cut down, that shouldn't be cut down. And Jesus flat out said, don't do it. Don't do it. Well, well what does that lead? What does that mean? What does that mean for us? I mean, so are we not supposed to judge anybody? Abs that, that's not true. That is the, probably the misquoted, most misquoted, most misapplied scripture in the Bible is, thou shalt not judge. You, so we're not supposed to judge anybody ever? No, that's, of course that's not true. We have to make judgments about people all the time. And it is appropriate to do so. But here's what Paul comes back and talks about this principle in Romans 12 now. Romans 12, uh, starting in verse three, Paul talks about this. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think of yourselves as better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. And then if you just jump a little bit down to Romans 14, and the, the pericope title says, the danger of criticism. It says this, accept other believers who are weak in the faith. Don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. That is, <laughs> I've never heard that that verse preached on. <laughs> Never. Every time I read it, I'm like, that's good. And then the whole chapter is about, you know, like lighten up, guys. Lighten up. Paul writing to us, lighten up. It's about all different kinds of things. And you could add things to the list that he talked about. He was talking about some food. He was talking about, uh, he was talking about days of the week. I I'm not going to bore you with all that. Go ahead and read that chapter. It's a good one. But what Paul, I think the essence, let's get to the, the root of it. The essence of what he's talking about, it might've been true back then, but I know it's true now, is we love good, strong, authoritative, polarizing talks. You know, that's like the, all the biggest influencers these days, all the good podcasts are like, you do it like this, because we like that. We like the clarity. We like the conviction of it. And it's nice to listen to all that aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Like aggra I like it too. I'm like, yeah, man, tell it how it is. You know, we like that. We like that, but we don't build our lives on what we like. We have to build our lives on what the word of God says. And there's a time and a place for clarity and conviction and strength. And like, even as I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it all the time. But there's other parts in our word that says, hey, don't you cut down all of it together. Don't go ripping up God's garden because you don't have all the facts. You don't have all the info. And then over here in this other place in the word, Paul is saying, hey, look, don't go around criticizing everybody you see because they do this and you do it that way. Don't go criticizing. And, and, people, and we don't like to talk about that part. But what I'm saying is let the wheat and weeds grow together. So let me just kind of explain what I mean by that. And it's cultural for our church here. 
for Lifeline Church, we've always kind of believed this, and I'm trying to articulate it for us. It's two don'ts and a do, all right? Two don'ts and a do. Uh, the first don't on the screen for you is don't self-righteously uh, tear down anything that looks like a weed. Don't self-righteously tear down anything. Don't go tearing up God's garden. Don't just go ripping up, ripping up, kicking out. There's other people growing in here that we're not sure how they're going to turn out. Okay, they might, they might stay a weed, but they might, they might actually get transformed. They might actually be made new. You know, we're not sure, but God's grace allows people to grow together. We don't need to go playing God, casting people out and tearing them down just because they don't know what we know yet. Does this mean we compromise truth? Absolutely not. No way. No way. We speak the truth in love. But there is this parable. There is other parts of scripture where we need to be aware that God's working on some people. And even though they may not be at my level yet, I need, I, need to ex, I need to express a little bit of grace in this time. I don't want to self-righteously just, boom, you're out, you're out, and pull people out, anything that looks like a weed. It's the goodness of God, the grace of God that leads people to repentance. It's God's desire that none should perish, but all would come into the understanding of his grace. So that's the first don't. Don't self-righteously pull out anything that looks like a weed, but this, that's one side of the ditch. But then there's another side that I don't want us to live at either. And the other side is don't wrongly believe that no one is ever going to get pulled out, that no one's going to get pulled out from the garden. That is an extreme that exists in the body of Christ. And it's sad. Um, let me explain kind of what it is. While it's true that the rain falls on the just and unjust alike, and God's grace is, is for people that sometimes we don't think deserve it, there is a, there is a, um, a false teaching that exists out there that basically says, you know, because grace wins, there's no such thing as hell. Nobody's going to hell. Everybody's going to heaven. Instead of all dogs go to heaven, it's all people go to heaven. It's like, wow, wow, that sounds nice. So, so nobody goes to hell? Yep, no, no. That's heresy and false teaching. It's not true. So while we don't want to self-righteously pull up everybody that looks like they're doing it wrong, we also don't want to say, oh, everybody comes in. It's no big deal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want to live there either. Um, that, is, that is extremely destructive, and it's not productive, and it's just flat out wrong. Um, I'm not going to name drop, or I'm not going to go ahead. and I, just, I want to teach you the truth that, that this does exist. There are people that think this way, and it's, and it's so destructive, and it's so, it's so not. I mean, even there's, a, there's another parable that Jesus tells about sheep and goats, and there it's in fact, going to be some people that think they deserve to go to heaven. And Jesus says, depart from me. I don't know you. That's rough. So there could be even some of us here. I don't mean to scare you. I mean, I'm not trying to be scary, but there we need to really do. We need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Because if we walk around thinking, well, I went to church. I did all the stuff. And then the judgment day comes and our, our day comes and we're like, hey, I'm good, right? Checked every box on the connection card. What's up? I'm in, right? And God would say, but I didn't, we didn't know each other. I didn't know you. You didn't know me. Depart from me. I never knew you. We've got to look inside and go, and, that, and that's what I want us to do. So two don'ts, but let's talk about the do. The do is this. Thank God that you're here. <laughs> Thank God that you're here and that he... God, not just us, he's more gracious than we are. I don't know if you know this, but he is. He wants the harvest to be as big as possible. He does. Even in other places in the word, he says he's, he's extending that time so that many can believe. He's extending the time. He's like, no one knows the day or the time except for the Father in heaven. And that, that, is, that time is being extended so people can know, so that we can go out with our little cards, you know, and we can do our thing and we can evangelize. We can share the love of Christ with people. God is the one who wants the harvest to be as big as possible. So be grateful for that. And don't self-righteously cast out everybody that you think is wrong. But also don't think that no one is wrong. Don't think that no one is going to actually have to face eternal damnation because we will. We will. If, if we turn a blind eye to that, it's not going to make it go away. So the last thing is this. Last thing I want to share with you, and this is the good news. Finally, finally the good news. 
A lot of bad news followed by some good news. Number three is this. Determine whether you are wheat or weed today. Determine whether you are wheat or weed today. The entire point of this whole message, the entire point, and the entire point of this parable that Jesus was trying to explain, and the entire, the entire message behind the underlying theme in the Bible is weeds don't have to stay weeds. <laughs> All right, that's the big difference between the parable of, of, of like our lawn and actual weeds right there and real life is that weeds don't have to stay weeds. Weeds can turn into wheat. Lost people can be found. We can be restored. We can be transformed, turned into something completely brand new. And that's what God was saying. That's what Jesus was saying is that, hey, uh, when, when it comes, when the judgment day comes, look, judgment will come. But don't rip them out yet because I want as much wheat as possible in my, ba- my barn in heaven. And for us, man, we, 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 it's easy to sit back. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Well, hang on, man. We, we, need to, we need to look in. We need to look into ourselves and say, am I doing this? Am I doing this just to do it? Are we like the people that are just poking in here and poking in there and coming to church every once in a while and just, oh yeah, mm mm-hmm. Because I don't know about you, but when that day comes, I don't want him to say, depart from me. I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I I don't want to be guilty of pretending I don't want to be guilty of just going through the motions. I don't want to be weed that looks like wheat because that's the issue at hand. Everybody in church looks good. Everybody in church puts the face on. Everybody in church is checking at least one box. But what I want us to do is determine, hey, what, what, how am I living? Where's my heart at? I want you to, uh, that's what I want you to think about is in 2 Corinthians 13. It's a paraphrase. I love this paraphrase, translation, paraphrase. And 2 Corinthians 13 says, test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along, taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You, f- you need firsthand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. And if you fail the test, do something about it. That's good. I love that. But what I love even more, 2 Corinthians 5. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. You ain't weed no (laughs) more. New person. You've been transformed. You've been made new. You've been turned into something different. We were all born weeds, but obviously we don't all stay that way. That means every single man, woman, and child has the opportunity to be made new if we accept Christ. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. I'm sprouting out new. I'm starting over, and I'm starting over wheat. Loved, made new in Christ. This is so powerful to me. because I have the privilege to tell you that even just this year in our humble church, we've had dozens of people who were weeds became wheat. Dozens of people have given themselves to Jesus just this year alone. Come on, let's celebrate together. Let's preemptively celebrate because I know some people might decide for that today. Even just, even just this on Wednesday, on Wednesday, a midweek service, we had a handful of people say, I'm starting new with Jesus. I'm starting new with Jesus. I, I want to be made new. It's, it never gets old. It never gets old. And it never, ever is something that we should put on the back burner or become a secondary issue. It's the main thing. This message is the main thing about the main thing. Those who are in Christ are made new. And you can be made new. You can be transformed. But look, look inside. Look in yourself, look in your heart. Look in your heart. Just just look at the reality of your life. Look at the fruit. Am Am I just going through the motions? Am I just playing church? 
or is, or is God my life? And do I want to continue to grow? Even if you've been here 20, 30 years, you can still keep growing and you can still come back to that, to that joy and that fresh place in your life to where you say, I'm, I'm, oh, I just, I'm new in Christ, saved for 30 years. I'm new in Christ today though, new in Christ today. So whether you're old, new, um, just starting, just coming, every single one of us has a story. Every single one of those handful of people on Wednesday that gave their lives to Jesus, they have a story. You have a story too of overcoming, overcoming. Maybe it's an addiction, overcoming. Maybe it's a lust or a, or a bondage of some kind. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's fear. There's, there's things in your life that you could be set free from today by just giving your life to Christ. I want to give every single person the opportunity to do that. So bow your heads, close your eyes with me. This is your moment. This is your chance. God sees you. He sees you. And he wants to, he wants to come into your life today. Father, thank you so much for, for your word and, and for the truth of your word, the truth that comes along with your word that, that teaches us all these wonderful, beautiful nuances of how to live for you and how to continue to grow. We could read and, and, and learn from this book every day of our lives and keep on learning new things and keep on refining our understanding of you. You're so big and you're so rich and you're so wonderful to us. So Lord, right now, I just thank you that you're opening hearts. And I thank you that you're, you're gonna make some people new today. And so if that's you, if, if you feel like you're far from God, maybe you've never had a relationship with him or you had a relationship with him, but it has, it has kind of passed away and your relationship with him is nowhere near where you know it should be or you believe it could be. I'm telling you right now, it can be there again. It can be you again. You can have, experience the joy of the Lord again. Just come to him. Just, just let him do it. Let him come into your life. Let him make you new from the inside out. He will do it. He will do it. So if that's you, just lift your hand up. And so I know who I'm praying for. Let's say, that's me. I want to be made new again. I want to let God into my life. Yes, I see you. I see you. That's so beautiful. Is there anyone else that says, I want to be made new. I want to start, I want to transform into your likeness. Start a new relationship with you. Amen. We're going to pray right now. Church, let's pray together as a family. No one praying alone. Just say it right after me. Say, Father God, I give myself to you. I give my heart to you. My whole life is yours. Forgive me of my sin. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit. I thank you for everything you're about to do in my life. Amen.